Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to my video on Masters. Yes, I'm a month late, well, sort of. Uh, I'm more going to be talking about how I felt uh, while taking part in the qualification process, uh, since that's something which they're kind of still testing out with Masters. So for those of you that missed what the Masters announcement was, uh, although it's been sort of everywhere until over recently, basically Masters is a new monthly uh, tournament system. It's not just one tournament, it's basically a tournament that you have to qualify for and it has a quite significant prize pool. Uh, the base prize pool starts at 2000 and you can donate to increase it, so currently it's at about 2700 So quite a substantial prize pool and uh, I think right now if you get first in it you get $800 uh, dollars around. Um, the details are in game, but anyway. So because of this whole new thing, it's basically uh, it was based off Pioneers. Uh, some of you may remember that Pioneers was a big tournament done with basically all invites uh, to publicize the game. This is the follow-up. So how does it currently work? Now there are currently three ways of qualifying for Masters. So the first one is to finish in top ten of the monthly rating race which just finished earlier today. Uh, the second was to win a gold ticket from one of the qualifiers, and the third is to get a wild card from the developers, which is basically uh, popular streamers or content producers that uh, get invited from other games, from what I can tell. So anyway, let's talk about the actual system itself, since I did take part heavily in um, the two main methods of qualification. So... The first one that we kind of focused on for most of the month was the tournament system. Now, the tournament system uh, had a two-stage qualifier process, which was interesting. So there were four silver ticket qualifiers, and they were single deck qualifiers, basically like uh, Friday Night Europe or Sunday Fun Day. And if you got in the top four of one of these, so basically if you only had one loss, if you got in the top four of one of these tournaments, then you got a silver ticket. With this silver ticket, you could play in the weekly golden ticket qualifier. And of those 16 players, only one got a golden ticket. The undefeated player from the Conquest tournament, uh, four-round Conquest tournament. So three slots went to that. Only three. This is the interesting thing, because it's a tournament, and the tournament qualification process was very lengthy and very complicated. You had to go through multiple tournaments, and I played in all three Golden Ticket qualifiers. But you had to play multiple tournaments and really try to like play in these. Like I ended up staying up or just getting up at three in the morning to play in the American Silver Ticket qualifiers because I wanted to increase the chances of actually getting one. Uh, thankfully for me, I never actually had to do that twice in a week, although I was prepared to do so. <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually have to do that twice in a week. The most I played in was two, I think. Yeah, the most I actually ever played in uh, in a week was two of the four. But, um, yeah, I didn't have to do the crazy wake up in the middle of the night to play a tournament thing twice, although I did do it, um, I did do it once. Uh, yeah, I did do it. Um, I did do it once, and I was prepared to do it uh, every single time, just to get the silver tickets. Now, the problem I had with this was that it was so complicated to get into a golden ticket qualifier, and then you have to go through this entire thing. You have to go through a field of stacked players, since these are all people that have come top four in the tournament, and then one guy <laughs> gets a ticket. So I was thinking, okay, that's a massive narrow down. Uh, so yeah, it was a huge narrow down. It was kind of weird that the conquest qualifier section was only contributing 3 out of 16 players, which is a really small amount. Then you got Ladder. Now, uh, Ladder is how I qualified. Um, at first, I thought, well, top 10, that'll be easy compared to uh, Golden Ticket qualifiers. I'm not really sure if it's easier, but it's definitely more stressful. I can say that for sure. So, what I didn't account for was the fact that Everyone who wanted to get into the Masters, which was about 20 players that were actually willing to uh, push themselves that hard, probably about 18, and the three of the ones that would have pushed themselves that hard actually won the Golden Ticket Qualifier, so they were kind of taken out of it. So the top 15 were so dedicated to actually um, getting in top 10 
that we pushed the ladder to its absolute limit. The rating increase went through the roof. I ended up, um, personally, I didn't get any sleep for two nights. Um, actually, on recording this, I've been awake for over 50 hours now. And it was insane. I ended up playing, I think, 144, 43 or 44 games over the two days. And the ladder got pushed to its limit. Like, to give you an idea of how ridiculous the rating uh, ended up getting, normally, on Friday, when the rating, like, mini reset thing happens every week, the first place player has about 1,800 points. And then rank 10 will be 1,750, 1,740. The ladder finished with everyone in the top 10 above 1,830 on a Tuesday. <laughs> That's insane. It was... Utterly ridiculous. We pushed the ladder so far up that honestly, like, it was getting insane. It was a case of you had to win two games for every one you lost. Like, just to stay at parity, and you had to win more than that to go up. And you had to win, I think, three in a row to actually secure your uh, place in top 10. And even then, it was more securing your place in top 15. Like, I had to um, play a couple extra games just to win one to keep in top 10. And it was kind of ridiculous to play through. So, yeah, we did push the ladder to an absolutely ridiculous degree. Uh, definitely one of the most stressful things I've ever done in Spellweaver. <laughs> but, yeah, I did talk to a lot of the people that were actually playing. And, honestly, I think everyone in top 10 is just the 10 people that push themselves the hardest. Because when it comes down to it, there is a variance element. But everyone played so many games just to, like, brute force it that... Out of the sort of 15 players that were really trying, uh, well, 15 to 20 players that were really, really trying, I think that the top 10 that ended up actually getting it were the people that put in the slight extra bit of effort. Uh, and the, just to show how close this was, by the way, the gap between 1st and 10th was 12 points. And the gap between 10th and a 15 was like 5 points. It was ridiculously close. Um, yeah, it's definitely the closest ladder race we've ever had, for obvious reasons, since everyone wants to get into Masters. Um, but yeah, so, having said that, you've got 13 places, is the idea. You have three wild cards, and you've got 13 places you've got to distribute. And honestly, I don't know what to say about it, because I think that getting in through ladder may actually be harder than getting in through a tournament. Because at least when you get in through a tournament, you can maybe hit luck for a couple of games, and then you'll get in. But the getting in through ladder requires an insane amount of dedication, which quite frankly is just unheard of in the Spell River community normally. Uh, you basically, all everyone in, who ends up in top 10 has to play as if they're the random guy that gets rank 1 because he's bored. And, like, the random good player who just plays, like, a hundred games in two days or something, uh, just because, eh, yeah, might as well get rank one. Everyone has to play like that, and more. So you end up pushing the rating higher than even, like, uh, people like Peacekeeper have, who just goes crazy on ladder. So, getting in through ladder is insanely hard, and it, and then getting in through tournaments is insanely limited. So, what do I think of it? Well... That's the weird thing. I personally think more people should get in through qualifiers. But the problem with that is that you'd have to take slots away from ladder. And getting in through top 10 is already ridiculously brutal. So if you cut it down any further, it's going to be absurd. Um, so I'm not really sure. Uh, I think... I mean, the first thing I was thinking about was, say... You get eight people in through uh, Golden Ticket Qualifiers. You run two 32-player um, Golden Tickets instead of three 16-player Golden Tickets. And then you have the top four get Golden Tickets. So that was my first idea. And then you have top five from Ladder. Now, for the record, I did actually finish fifth. So I would have still got in through this. But I think getting in through top five would make it more tournament-centric. I'm not sure whether that's better in general, though, because I do feel like, because of how hard everyone's pushing ladder, keeping in mind ladder gets harder depending on how hard people are actually trying. So, keeping in mind how hard it was to just push into top 10 of ladder, maybe you want to keep it ladder-focused? 
and then say, well, you can still try the qualifiers and get through that if you don't either have the time or, quite frankly, the patience uh, to play the 150 games you need to do in the last three days on ladder. So maybe just keep it the way it is or maybe try something else different and then come back to this. I think that's probably what I'd suggest at this point is just trying something a bit different, try something a bit more tournament lopsided instead of ladder lopsided for next month. And then the month after, just either try something new if neither really work, or go back to this one if it works better, or keep the new one if that works better. I think that's probably the only thing you can say, because there are upsides and downsides to making it both ladder and uh, qualifier lopsided. Where with qualifiers, you're going to get less... Like, you're still going to get really good players, but you're not going to get the... How to say this? You're not going to get the best... You're not going to get the guaranteed just best players at the time, uh, which makes it a bit more exciting actually, and also means that you get people who not necessarily haven't been playing as long, but just people that don't spend uh, can't spend as much time on ladder, but they invest into pre into prepping for tournaments, and then it works, and they hit luck for one or two rounds, and then they get in, and then you get uh, you get some unknown names in the masters, which is good. Um, but by that logic, do you want to increase it? I don't know. Uh, I honestly don't know. I think that the ladder pick is always going to be the best people in the game currently. and Because they have to play at their absolute best to actually get in through top 10. So it's definitely going to be the best people in their best form. So you get 10 people of that. Then you get 3 wild cards. And then you get 3 people who are pretty good. But... They're not get. It's not guaranteed that they're insanely good. They just have to be good enough to actually beat a decent field of players in a tournament, which is a small sample size of games. So I do like the idea of that, but I think we need to test out a few different ways of doing this. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but anyway, besides that, I actually do like the idea. It's definitely made the game a lot more competitive, and now we actually have professional spellweaver players. Yes, we do. Uh, since it's a money tournament. So, I think that in general has been very, very interesting. It's also driven a lot of deck ingenuity. Like, in the last week, like, the metagame was pretty much solved, and in the last week, the amount of stress just on some of the top players has basically forced certain decks and also certain builds of existing decks into existence. Just trying to find any edge whatsoever to um, get up the ladder. For anyone that's curious, I ended up actually getting um, rank 5 with... Uh, the Rage deck. Uh, I haven't made deck tech on it recently, but, um, yes, uh, if you look on Spellweaver Source, there's a couple people that have similar builds to me. Uh, but yeah, I was running Advanced Zash instead of Burke, and it seemed to work out quite well. But the way that the ladder ended up working, and I th might as well talk about this since uh, it's a bit awkward to make a video about. Just a short topic. Might as well talk about this, just ha what happened with the metagame in the last couple of days. Yes, days, not weeks. So in the last couple of days, you had a completely unknown deck, just, well, it didn't appear, it just proved itself, which was this, like, NC Hate Bears deck, uh, which I talked a bit about in the meta report. And this Tier 2 deck that wasn't massively good, basically Wisp was playing it, he built the deck, and he designed it, and he's been playing it, and he finally tweaks it, and then he cracks the code, and it works. So he gets this deck to work with all these disruptive creatures, and... It just works. And then a whole bunch of other people pick it up. And the ladder starts filling up with these NC, uh, like, Hate Bears decks. And then Kayanu, keep in mind, yesterday... Yes, this is how fast things move when every single top player is playing non-stop. Yesterday, there were six Kayanus in top ten. This is Kayanu Blue. When the ladder finished, there was one... <laughs> They got hated into oblivion. Uh, the entire ladder switched to Vamp Lamp decks, Mono Red, and NC, and they got annihilated. Basically, it became a really, really bad ladder choice. And also, um, Drain, Darius started dropping as well. I think one or two of those ended up in um, top 10, but definitely was nowhere near as good as it was uh, even three days ago. It was a really, really good choice in ladder three days ago, and then it just didn't work. Uh, which I noticed on Monday, I went through a massive drop. I think I dropped from rank 8. I was rank 2. Then the ridiculous ladder inflation happened where it went up by 100 points in a day. 
and I got dropped to rank 8, and then I kept playing the decks I had been, and I dropped down to rank 35 or something. I dropped 300 points in one day, and then I had to gain all of them back. So, adapting to the ladder change, as it happened, was insanely difficult. And I did talk to a lot of people that uh, got into top 10, and a lot of them had to change decks multiple times just to keep up with the ladder. It was that insane. So, yeah, it... The, I mean, the metagame normally evolves over a series of weeks, but with the amount of pressure on all of the top players, it was kind of forced to evolve to its final stage in a matter of days, which was not expected, but it happened. I mean, competition uh, breeds ingenuity, basically. Which, considering we've got Masters coming up, means that I think the metagame is fairly solved, and I don't think it's going to progress much until Sunday. The reason for that is because a whole bunch of pressure just got released off all of the people that would normally be building these decks. So we pretty much all got the builds. We know all the decks, we know all the builds that work, more or less. And um, that's what's going to be played on Sunday. Uh, I have gone on record saying I hate this Conquest format, but yeah. I, I just don't like playing this metagame in Conquest, basically. But uh, I might make a video on that in the future. So, yeah, then after Masters, we're getting a buff patch, which I'll do a podcast on, I always do. Uh, see who I can get on for that. But yeah, we're getting a buff patch to kind of rattle things up, which is nice. And then at the end of the month, we should be getting a new set. That is what we've been told, is that we're getting a new set at the end of June. Which is not very specific, but they said end of June, so yeah, that's uh, that's a good one. Outside of that, news-wise, I think there was um, something about campaigns being in development. Uh, we haven't got an exact date for that at all, but they're in development, which is useful since I do like single-player modes. In fact, I think when the campaign comes out, I might do a video series just playing through it, depending on whether people want to watch it, of course. But anyway, that's pretty much my recap on the whole lead-up to Masters thing. I haven't been making very many videos recently because I have been trapped in the ladder, basically. But um, I will be making a deck tech on the NC Hate Bears deck. Probably tomorrow when I get some sleep, and also I might do one on Wisdom Dominion at some point, since uh, that's been a very popular deck recently. I know Fuzz has covered that recently. But anyway, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback, want to ask me any questions, put it in the comment section below. If you'd like to support me directly, then there is a link to my Patreon campaign in the description. But as for now, it's been Jotto, signing off.